Hey guys, what's up? Okay, how was that for a hello? Was that better than last time? <laughs> I was told that I should say, yo, 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 homies, what up? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, hi, hi guys. I have some fun stuff for us today. I hope that you are all doing well. And uh, let me know, tell me on the chat, how are you coping with social distancing? If you're still going into work, is it weird? John says at work, everyone's walking around like this. I say, uh, if you're a praying type, say a prayer for Mark that he gets better soon. And uh, I'm so glad to have you here. This is so, so great. And uh, ah, DK Hawk, hello, I'm so glad to have you here. Subvids, and John, and Jan, and Hank, and uh, Everybody, Robert, I'm so glad that you could join me again today. Uh, thanks for putting up with a whole uh, week of um, live streams from me and joining me so that we can all, you know, just take our mind off things and have some fun. So <laughs> that's my theme for today. I don't have my chalkboard here because I was gathering up a bunch of stuff, uh, but I do have, that's the theme today is oddball and unusual photography ideas, photo ideas, tips and tricks and techniques. And uh, I'm going to share them. And I would like for us to maybe share some images. So I have this idea. Uh, I'm gonna make a list with all of these ideas. And if, uh, if you have ideas, add them in the chat and I will add them to the list. And, uh, and then for the coming week, the Hey Rachel Lurch live images. I'm still looking at all your images. They're fantastic and I will still be featuring. So don't worry if you just submitted, uh, they're still definitely in the queue for featuring. Um, but uh, for this week, like the, the new ones that you upload for now, let's see if <laughs> we can use one of these techniques. And then uh, if, if uh, yeah, so if you put the on Instagram an image that uses one of these techniques and then in the uh, in the description somewhere, just describe it in a way that I'll know that yes, you used one of these techniques. Uh, I don't know, maybe we need like a code word. Um, I don't know, what could it be? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so anyway, all right, shall we get started? All right, exciting. Um, all right, so the first one is something that, oh, I, uh, I don't have it here. I thought I had it. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to go get one of my props. Um, one second, maybe I can call someone. Eli, Eli, can you go get something for me? Sure. What is it? Come here, I'll whisper it to you. I don't wanna give it away. Okay, he'll come back. I'll start with another one. Okay, so I have a list of 17 oddball and unusual uh, photography techniques to try. So uh, let's start with um, rain, okay? Uh, we all like, you know, pictures of rain. Well, I don't know if you do, but I really do. Just, <laughs> just the one, thanks. Woo. Okay, thank you. Oh. He's saying hello. <laughs> okay, uh, so rain. So uh, <laughs> one of the techniques would be to get, um, you know, some glass. All right. So sometimes we want that beautiful image of uh, something through a window. It's all moody, you know, maybe uh, through a window pane and you have a, a candle and it's all rainy and it's beautiful. But you don't have rain or the window that you have is not getting wet by the rain. So this one is kind of a, an obvious one, but grab a spray bottle and spray the glass or get a piece of glass. Or if you don't have, if you're thinking, where can I get a piece of glass, get a photo frame from the dollar store or one that you're not using and take the glass out of it and spray it and then uh, use it as your window. Now, the other thing that you can do is um, 
spray it all up and hold it really close to your lens and see if that adds kind of a moody atmosphere. See with certain lighting if you can get bokeh, see uh, if you can get just a soft kind of, um, you know, soft foreground, uh, not foreground, soft atmosphere, kind of like a soft focus filter, but not quite so even and perfect. So spray bottle is number one. And I put it as number one because it's the most traditional, orthodox, and uh, maybe not so exciting. Now, Eli has gone for me and uh, gotten me the next prop. So let me prepare it here. I wanted to show you an image that I did with this, but um, I couldn't find it. Like I said, I was running around the house doing stuff. So here's the next one. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> I know, I know these are hard to come by right now. Yes, this is a toilet paper roll, okay? <laughs> and what I want you to do with this toilet paper roll Believe it or not, it is pretty, it's pretty neat. You might think, oh, really? But if you take a picture and put that toilet paper roll right in front, I'm gonna turn it on so I can see. You're gonna have a pretty neat um, natural vignette around your picture. However, it's more than just a vignette. I have taken a picture of my son when he was a baby and, uh, and I used the toilet paper roll and the line on the inside that, I don't know if you can see it there. You know how the, this line, whoops, where is it? This line that goes around in the making of the toilet paper roll, you can actually set that up to be part of your image. And if you have say some side light coming in, it makes, not only does it make a vignette, but part of the circle that is nice and soft is, is lit up. So it makes like a nice kind of 3D vignette. And uh, well, these days, you know, this could be an expensive prop, but <laughs> let's hope not. Um, great, okay, so that was number two. Okay, next idea. Okay, let's see. Um, Say I'm somewhere and, or I'm inside and for whatever reason I've gone somewhere and I don't have a tripod or I do have a tripod, but it is not um, easy to make it get into the place that I want it to go. So this is pretty neat, okay? So I'm gonna give you an alternative. What we've got here, ready? got my bulb on green today and ta-da <laughs> all right so uh, a tripod screw matches the size of a standard lamp screw so <laughs> If you are without tripod and you don't know what to do, or say, you know, you have a cool bulb like the one that I do, uh, and now I, I have some uh, some light built in to the, uh, behind the lens that is going towards my subject. And this light that I have here does change color as I showed on my last live stream. So, uh, you know, maybe if I wanted to light up my, uh, this is a Wi-Fi bulb by Sangled Home. What if I wanted to add like an orange glow? That's orange. Believe it or not, it's probably very bright in the picture. But uh, I could go blue or purple and uh, pink. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, lamp <laughs> stand in for a tripod. Just be very, very careful that it is sturdy. I don't want all of these, okay, or try at your own risk. Be very careful, don't break your camera. 
make sure you have a sturdy leg. So there we go, another one. I can't remember what number that is, maybe number three or number four. All right, so <laughs> now in your, um, as your subject, children are notoriously difficult to photograph. Make sure you have a big SD card uh, full of uh, space but this is something that I have heard of and I haven't actually tried myself because uh, I no longer have younger children um, maybe if that yet um, then here's a good idea for getting their attention now as with anything with little kids you cannot use this too long because they see it and they're like oh but then their uh, attention goes elsewhere but from what I've heard if you get a pretty cool Pez dispenser, okay, and just take a kitchen knife or something uh, and kind of uh, make the bottom just a little bit smaller. Apparently it's a little bit too big, but if you shave it down a little bit, it fits right on the hot shoe of your camera. Now, that means that you can't use your flash on a hot shoe, but if you have an external flash or you're using, um, natural light then you know pez dispenser on the top and it's like you know uh, if you smile guess what guess who gets this <laughs> and uh, and just make sure that it's you know when you shave it down that it's still soft and everything but uh, i thought that was pretty cool and uh i love <laughs> i love the conversation you guys are having here i'm uh I'm looking at your conversation about the uh, about the light as a tripod and uh, you know people are saying Calvin says that's a really bright idea <laughs> that's awesome and then uh, dad jokes and and Calvin says make light work of that I love it that's awesome all right so uh, next one um, this one's kind of cool hmm. Say you're out in bright daylight or you have lighting that is not exactly the way you want it, but you want a dark background. Get a flash. I don't have my external flash here with me. Um, let's pretend this is an external flash. I have my flash on my camera or somewhere else, right? Set your flash to maximum, like as bright as it'll go. Bright, bright, bright. And uh, make sure that you're somewhat close to your subject. This will make the subject like really, really bright. And uh, obviously you don't really want that. However, if you then put your camera into manual mode and reduce the exposure so that your subject is properly exposed, the background is going to fade way, way down. Some In some situations, right down to black. And, uh, and so then you can have a really neat moody picture where uh, you know a fake nighttime shot or your subject is bright and the background is black it's uh it's kind of cool and experiment with it see if uh see if that if that produces something really creative and inspiring for you <laughs> uh hello everybody who's just joining um hey jim hey arrow man uh all of you that are chatting and uh and i haven't said hello yet hello it's so great to have you here all right so uh, we've gotten that, and the next thing is, do you have any of these in your house? Sandwich bag, you know? Just a small one. Um, use plastic or other, uh, other materials and put them in front of your lens, maybe around the outside. You could cut a circle here. Put it over your lens and make sure that it is actually covering parts of the outside. And when you take your picture, you'll find that you have a cool, different type of vignette. Okay, so something uh, soft. You can use different uh, colored things. You can use a uh, whiteboard marker maybe and, and change different uh, colors around the outside. Uh, you can also get a neat look just by, hang on. I always keep these by my desk because they're so cheerful. Oops, and I'm dropping stuff. <laughs> Use any sort of, uh, you know, material that you have and just partially cover your lens. Can you hear me? 
just partially cover your lens and uh, what that will do is it'll just make that color kind of glow in that area play around with that and different types of materials it's actually uh, it's actually really cool all right uh, right next one I don't know if you guys have been counting <laughs> I have about 17 okay next 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 reflections uh, you know we take pictures indoors of uh, um, What's that word? Oh yes, still life images, right? So maybe I'm taking pictures of flowers or maybe I'm taking pictures of um, something else and I just, I really want to give it, a, you know, a different look. Try giving it uh, a reflection. And how are you going to do that? You don't necessarily have to have a really perfect reflective surface. You can use all sorts of things. One of them we all have a cell phone don't turn it on Off. Uh, just put it down if you have a small enough subject place it on the phone and you get a perfect reflection if that is too small then go for an iPad or a tablet and um, the thrift store when we can go back out again and uh, and grab an old tablet and so then just put let's see if I can show you here Put your uh, put your subject right there. Doesn't that look amazing? I love reflections. I think that looks amazing. Okay, so you know, look around your house for different reflective surfaces. Lots of fun. What else could you use? Like I said, an empty picture frame is good. Um, try shooting maybe through uh, the end of a glass. If you have like a fancy glass. Uh, for you know I don't know what types of glasses there are different drinking glasses and so on but some of them have like a patterned bottom or like a kind of bulbs and so on try uh, try looking for a uh, a creative image uh, what am I trying to say an abstract maybe or something that uh, repeats because of the refracted light It'd be very very cool all right uh, let's see what else can I tell you okay panning you guys have probably all heard of panning, okay? Panning is when you have your camera and you have a moving subject and you move with it, okay? And you take your image while you're moving with it. The subject, if it's moving, is going to hopefully be sharp and everything else is blurred. Now, if you're having trouble with it or keeping having trouble keeping it, hi, Mark, <laughs> so good to see you here. Um, so if you're having trouble keeping it, you know, pretty smooth, here's a tip. Uh, get your tripod, okay? And just slightly loosen the ball head, okay? Not a lot, don't drop your camera. Loosen the ball head and use it to pan your camera, okay? Give it a shot. And then remember to tighten it afterwards don't need any accidents all right another tip for you portrait photographers or people who would like to try some images with motion okay <laughs> hair dryer if it's not long enough get an extension cord hair dryer you could get you know a really <laughs> get your teenager to flop their hair around or um, you know get plants leaves moving if you want an image with motion and you don't have the right wind go for the hair dryer next i love the lighting ones they're pretty cool okay next dappled light or patterned light get something in your house that has a pattern you could use this you could even get um a big poster board and cut out uh, a pattern that you want and uh, and then use it in front of your light source so this is my light source and I just put it like this and uh, you can see what it does to your subject hey pretty cool <laughs> doesn't have to be a person subject it could be uh, you know an object or whatever but you know play around with different light sources the uh, light sources sorry play around with different patterns and shine your light through it it's something really unique 
All right. Now, um, if you like underwater photography, but you don't want to use, uh, you don't want to get your good camera damaged. Now you have to be very careful with this, okay? But if you have sort of a controlled environment and, uh, and you're willing to do this, you could get a fish tank, something that's not too heavy to hold, put the fish tank in the water and then you can hold your camera underneath to, uh, in the fish tank to get the image of what's under the water. It gives you a clear view, kind of like if you were at an aquarium and you're looking through the glass, but this way you can, um, you know, you can set it up how you like. If you wanna get your bathtub full of water and, uh, and then get some fancy lighting on there, maybe put your fish tank in and then you can take some, uh, some cool shots with your, without damaging your camera, but be very, very careful. Uh, yeah, I haven't tried that one. I did read about it and uh, it sounds pretty cool. In fact, the photos that I saw from it look pretty cool uh, as well. I, uh, I can't afford to go get a whole brand new underwater rig. So it's, uh, it's kind of a neat idea. Now, hold on one second. I'm just gonna reset my camera because I know it's gonna freeze soon. Hold on one sec. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Next. Um, we all have fancy filters and we all love them. Well, we may not all have them, but I love my filters. I only have three though. And uh, somebody has suggested using sunglasses as a filter. And I think that that could be kind of cool. And uh, the neat thing is, is that nowadays there's a uh, trend or at least there was anyway uh, for girls to wear really big sunglasses like the old-fashioned you know uh, starlet type <laughs> so you can get nice big ones and uh, you can get some that graduate in their intensity some that are warm colors some that are cool tone um, yeah so try sunglasses as a filter try different things all right that's the next one let's see Ooh, uh so <laughs> this is kind of cool you know especially if you're taking pictures of flowers outdoors or uh, people outdoors try getting a, a sprinkler going in the background but try to get the light try to angle it in such a way that the light lights it up if that doesn't work too well for you um use a sprayer you know if you want to have like say a subject with say a mist or a spray in the background, light up the mist and spray, uh, spray it, have it lit up, and then expose for your image. You might have to get someone to help you with this, uh, but it can make a really sparkly, uh, soft, really cool looking background. And um, use a, a sprinkler, uh, like I said, a spray bottle, or um, if you have one of those, uh, lawn kind of sprayer things that come out and, and bigger but make sure there's no chemicals in it and uh, yeah you can get a really nice lit up with uh, raindrops or rainbows even behind you that's kind of cool all right uh, moving on let's see okay <laughs> this one's kind of cheating but you know what that's kind of what we're talking about today so go to the dollar store and get some I don't have any but get some um, things of little plastic bugs okay or maybe a snake or uh, something else make them small okay and you're not going to take pictures of them directly but what you can do is this make sure it's not a really thick thick leaf but put this uh, whatever it is that you found maybe a snake or a centipede or whatever on the leaf but you shoot from under the leaf and you're gonna get a silhouette. So if the sun is overhead and the little guy is on top of the leaf and you're under the leaf, you can get a really neat picture of a, a beautiful glowing leaf with the detail coming through and, uh, and then you just have the silhouette of a nice little bug on top. So 
<laughs> or maybe you do want it to be a Lego man or something. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, we're almost done here. In fact, I'm not sure if I have any more. Let's see. Oh, um, kind of an interesting tip for Photoshop. Oh, wait, I do have another one before I do that. So uh, if you're looking for a nice background and you can't find it anywhere, um, really good cheat, put it onto your computer, all right? So turn on your computer, find, go to um, a great place for stock photography um, that doesn't cost anything is pixabay.com. And, uh, you know, load up a picture or load up a picture that you've taken that you want as your background. Put your subject in front and then shoot it with a low aperture. Um, play around with that. I mean, the lighting, you have a backlit screen, so you're going to have to make adjustments for it. But try a digital background. See how it works for you. All right. Um, yeah, you may have to play around with the button. You want to get an image of the landscape. And the tourists are moving around, and they're in your picture, and you can't get rid of them. Um, there is something that you can do, all right? So set up your, uh, your image on a tripod, okay? And set it all up the way that you want it exposed, and then take a series of maybe 10 or 20, um, 10 or 20 different images, all with the same settings and everything and the same lighting, and make them about, you know, five to 10 seconds apart if your tourists are moving around. And this is if you have sporadic tourists, like you can still see your landscape in between the tourists. Take these images, go into Photoshop, and what you can do is, and um, takes out all of the things that don't belong, that aren't found in every single image. So if a tourist is found over here in one image, but not in any of the other images, it will remove that tourist and it'll replace it with part of the picture from one of the other images. And so it'll bring together uh, an image for you that is uh, hopefully tourist free. I should do like a little um, tutorial on that sometime. Should be fun. <laughs> All right, um, a couple more. Um, making making fake lens flares. We, you know what? Uh, we tend to avoid lens flares, put on our lens hoods and all that, but sometimes uh, we like that lens flare. I actually like, depending on the image, I like to have let, uh, the light from the sun coming in, um, but it's not always situated, situated where I want. And so, grab a CD. Most of us don't use these anymore anyway. And uh, and play with the light with the CD. Uh, yeah, you should be able to, at some point, create some sort of a lens flare if you have a sun out. Another thing I've heard, I haven't tried this, but uh, get some fishing line and put it in the perpendicular to the angle of the lens flare that you want. So if I wanted a lens flare coming across like this, I could put a fishing line like this across my lens and move around until I get the sun catching it and it'll make a lens flare. Haven't tried it, but I think it sounds pretty neat. So, any other ideas? If you have ideas, please leave them <laughs> in the comments. And uh, I'm so excited that you've all been here with me. Let me just make sure that I didn't miss any. Um, oh, uh, I haven't tried this, but you know, if you want kind of, you know, I was talking about the uh, sprinkler and the, um, you know, using a hose or a spray to light up uh, water in the background. Apparently you can also buy something called atmosphere aerosol. And so you can, if you want like a, a, a misty or moody uh, area around your subject, you can buy an aerosol that sprays around and stays in the air. And then you just have to work with your lighting to make sure that it's visible. I've never tried that before. Um, you can get tin foil. If you crunch up tin foil behind your subject, uh, you can get a really cool bokeh. Very, very cool. Ooh. Robert has an idea, it says multiple exposures. 
I love that. That is so cool. <laughs> uh, it was kind of neat when you had a film camera because, um, because you could not wind on your camera and just take an exposure over top of an exposure over top of an exposure. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, these are all my ideas for now. Uh, play with different uh, perspectives and angles as well. If you guys ever look at some of my husband, John, his social media, a lot of his, uh, a lot of his uh, avatars, his profile pictures, are of him from here up and sideways. I'm sure you can picture that with John. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, some uh, some fun stuff. So, hey, Rachel Lurch Live, if you try any of these, I'm going to make a list of them. I'll do it right now. I haven't... Uh, updated my blog in a little bit. I've just been kind of busy. Even though we're home, we're busy. Um, I'm going to make a blog post and also I'll post it on Facebook with all of these ideas on them. And then if you try any of them, post them on Hey Rachel Lurch Live and uh, and just put in the description somewhere that uh, that's what you were playing around with. And I hope I can feature your image in an upcoming uh, live stream or video. I do have a vlog coming out, like a traditional vlog, and uh, I'm looking forward to posting that tomorrow, guys. It's uh, it's an at-home vlog, and uh, you know what? Actually, I really like I like those. I like making the videos with the music and and the pictures and all of that. So I hope you can join me tomorrow, and uh, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today, and I will talk to you later. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>